So um, the first type of, of reporting format we talked about was the aggregate report. Um, as receivers generate this, um, the, all of the data that's collected over the reporting period is rolled up by the 5322 from domain. So you can think of it as the aggregate report is tied to the domain that publishes the policy. So if you just have the very simple case, the one sort of our, our example domain.com, example.com, um, you have underscore dmark.example.com, and that's the only domain that's involved. Let's assume nobody on earth is spoofing that domain. You're going to get a report that rolls up. Sorry, forget about the part about not spoofing the domain. Assume people are. Um, you're going to get a report that rolls up all of the IP addresses that have tried to transmit mail to that given receiver using example.com in the 5322 from header in that user visible uh, domain. Um, the uh, interval of this report is set in minutes. And by default, uh, it's going to come to you every day. Now, depending on the receiver that you're talking with, they may or may not honor report intervals less frequent than a day. Um, the reason for this can be pretty varied from lack of resources to, I don't know, slow databases or they just don't want to send much mail. Um, or it can come down to the fact that they're physically incapable of aggregating that much data on any interval less than a day. So set it to what you think you want and what powers whatever ana analysis you're trying to do. But um, don't be shocked if from some reporters they're only able to send you uh, on a daily basis. Um, the XML format, again, kind of touched on this already, is tied to a given domain but organized by IP address, and it contains the results from the underlying auth mechanisms, um, whether the alignment uh, was consistent with what you had set in your policy, and what policy actions were taken. So the idea is that even though we call the forensic reports forensic because you're actually seeing the, you know, a message intact um, as it was sent, the aggregate reports provide data of kind of a forensic nature as well. It's, it's sort of the you know, post-mortem report of here's all the mail I received with this domain on it, the IPs that sent it, and the results that the policy took. Um, there is also a special case that we'll talk about a couple of times, and especially when we do the breakouts. Um, if you go back and look at things like DKIM and SPF, uh, that deal with how you actually operate an MTA, mention is made of something called local policy. And local policy is this bucket of policy that you, as the operator of the MTA, can put whatever you want to into it. I mean, strictly speaking, you should conform with good email practices. But in local policy, you can choose, for example, in the case of DMARC, to always ignore DMARC mechanism failures for mail that you absolutely no to be sent by a mailing list manager. Um, you may just decide to do that, and you're free to do that um, as long as uh, you log that action in the aggregate report so that somebody, you know, the, uh, the mail sender can then recreate uh, what you did with their mail. Um, if you don't do things like this, then as they go back through and analyze the data, there are gaps. So here's an example of the, uh, the policy block within an XML message, or an XML reporting format. Um, this was the policy that was operative when the report was put together. So um, when I implemented aggregate reporting, we refreshed the policy on the DNS TTL that we were instructed to. So we pulled the record. We looked at the expiry time. We logged off the record and the expiry time because we didn't want to have to query this thing billions of times a day. And we would include so that whoever was looking at the report, if they ever wanted to go back and refer to why was a given policy action taken, they could look and see what policy I saw when I received the mail. And then this is a full section uh, reporting the sort of events of mail sent from 106.10.148 and so on. Um, you can see just from looking at this that the policy that was, the operative policy at the time was none. Uh, DKIM passed, SPF failed, 
And if we sort of skip down, we can see what the, uh, the identifier that I was aligning against uh, was. And then you go back down into the auth results and you can see for the individual domains that were checked what the results were. So I want to point out the difference between what you're seeing in the auth results section as opposed to what you see up in that row block. Um, when we talk about authenticated identities and aligning the results and all of that, what you see down in the auth results section is the result of the raw mechanism. So if, D, if the DKIM evaluation or SPF evaluation passed or failed, and then what you see up in the policy evaluated section is whether we were able to obtain a passing aligned result. So forensic reports, kind of spent some time talking about this. Uh, you can use the AFREF or IODEF format. Um, every example we've seen in operation so far has been AFREF. Um, the idea is that every time DMARC that DMARC mechanism, the evaluation, fails, the receiver generates one. And we've kind of made a request in the spec that you send these things in real time. Earlier in the deck, we mentioned that sometimes um, the forensic reports can sort of make up the difference or help uh, form a better, a more complete picture of what you're seeing as a receiver. Uh, they can fill in the gaps between aggregate report intervals. Um, because these things are sent in real time, if you have the capability of processing them and understanding, you know, is this a problem in my infrastructure or am I seeing the leading edge of an attack, it kind of gives you, as a sender, more of a heads up to take action against badness that may be perpetrated against you or if somebody in your organization has stood up a mail server that they shouldn't. This is kind of the fastest, most real-time way to get that information. Um, the... Uh, a question earlier that someone asked about, can I set up uh, a domain and begin sending email contrived to generate uh, a, a deluge of forensic reports? And the answer, I'm candidly, was yes, absolutely you can. Uh, it was either in MOG San Francisco of this year or in Berlin where uh, I used a phrase I've come to regret. Um, when I worked for so-called large internet mailbox provider, that you could use my infrastructure to hose down anyone you wanted to and perform a denial of service attack against them because I have massive outbound sending capability. Um, I'm no longer with that provider, so I can't speak to what kind of throttling they put in place, but when we talked about this and the security risk it presented and the potential for abuse, we kind of came back to best practices as people who send and receive email. If you're going to generate forensic reports, we consider it a best practice. We can't tell you what to do, we can only advise, but we consider it a best practice that you, you do things to make sure that you're paying attention to the outbound velocity of the mail that you're sending, and particularly if you're bombing one domain or another. Um, there is a very good chance that somebody could be experiencing a legitimate attack there's an equally possible chance that your infrastructure could be using to conduct a denial of service attack against somebody's reporting infrastructure, or if all of their mail, reports and legitimate mail, come in through the same services, take down their ability to receive email. But the responsibility we felt sat squarely on the shoulders of the people actually generating the reports. Um, some privacy issues. Yeah, go ahead. And the, the other thing I wanted to add there is, uh, you know, whenever somebody brings up, well, can't I, can't I use this to generate some sort of reflection or denial of service attack? The answer is sure. There are already lots of ways to do that in email. Um, this is the only one that uh, renders the payload of your attack detailed forensic information about the infrastructure you're using to conduct that attack and packages it up and sends it directly to the person you're trying to attack. So of all the different ways you can do it, this is probably the worst one because this is like tailor-made for a legal team to come after you if you do it. Absolutely. Um, you, you'd have to realize the desired goal of your attack quickly before people figured out who you were and shut you down. So um, the, the final thing we wanted to say here is that because forensic reports of, of highest value are unredacted, you know, they contain the text as originally sent, any URLs that are embedded, any encoded MIME sections, so on and so forth, there's a, there's a potential here for exposing information um, to, let's say that you're sending the forensic reports to three different parties. The original domain that sent the report and then maybe two intermediary providers who process reports on behalf of other people. Be aware that you could be sending them information that they should not have access to. And just like 
ARF reports can be redacted, so too can AFREF. Um, it, it's just a decision, again, that you, you sort of have to make based on your, your tolerance for privacy and risk. Um, the other thing is that uh, aggregate reports are something that we encourage everyone who implements DMARC on the receiving side to support because we, we don't fundamentally understand the value of being able to sort of reject and quarantine these things without being able to provide people insight into how their auth practices are actually working. So aggregate reports, we, I believe the language is normative that we require senders or receivers to implement it. But forensic reports, because of their sensitive nature, we do not mandate that a receiver implement them. We, we ask them very, very nicely to, um, but when you start participating here and if you do put a forensic reporting address, you'll very quickly learn which domains will send them to you and which ones won't. Um, so there, there have been some questions. This may go back to the, the use of the, uh, the reporting mechanism as kind of a mail cannon. Um, one of the uh, provisions we've put in the spec is the ability to limit the size of the report. So a lot of folks have restrictions on the size of the mail that their inbound infrastructure will accept, 10 megs, 25 megs, whatever the case may be. Um, you can indicate the size of the report you would like to get back. And if the report uh, exceeds that, It'll just be truncated after that point. Um, this is also a good time to talk about perhaps considering using HTTP to get your reports instead of mail to, because there obviously you can just stream content over HTTP and that's how it was designed to work. So instead of accepting a big monolithic blob of an email, you can build a sort of a more robust infrastructure that's HTTP based to receive these messages. So we sort of talked about this earlier. Um, again, like how do you control or, in, or exert greater control over how the reporting mechanism actually operates? Um, between the first version and the second version, we didn't actually have anything here to manage this. Um, so it, it was, People came up with attacks essentially where people could, uh, where a third party could direct an attack against a domain by leveraging somebody with uh, the ability to send lots of reports. So we added a provision in there borrowing from other specs, other RF, uh, RFC standards that define reporting functions to allow the report generator to check that someone actually is capable of receiving a report. So it's sort of assumed that if you publish a DMARC record and you ask for reports in it and you refer them back to yourself that you do in fact want the report. But what if you publish that record and in addition to specifying yourself, you specify someone else you want copied on all of your forensic traffic? A uh, conforming DMARC implementation can go out to that domain that you've specified to receive the reports and check for a record that indicates that they are willing in fact to receive those reports. Um, and that's built onto, that's another underscore domain, but the format for that is off of the DMARC subdomain. You add underscore report, the uh, domain that publishes the DMARC record, and in there you put a much smaller DMARC record, again, V equals, and then where the reports are to go. 